This morning we looked at Luke chapter 15 as we looked at the parable of the prodigal son. And we saw the story, the earthly story with a heavenly meaning of how a person chose to depart from the father's house and spend his inheritance in wasteful, riotous, uh, evil living. And then when he hit rock bottom, he realized his situation and repented and came back to the father. We also saw that his older brother had a bad attitude, a sinful attitude towards the situation. And we saw there the lost son. What we are going to see in these parables that come before the parable of uh, the uh, prodigal son or the lost son are parables that talk about the concept of being lost as well. And the reason why he gave these parables in Luke chapter 15 is stated in verse 1. Luke chapter 15 and verse 1 and 2. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Now you have to understand the concept and the understanding of the Pharisees. The Pharisees, that very name that they had for themselves, meant separated ones. They were to be separated from the world. And these Pharisees had a misconception of what the Savior would be, what His work would be, what He would accomplish when He came to earth. The Pharisees and the scribes, which would be the copiers of the law, the scholars, they actually thought that they were above sin and they needed no repentance at all, that they were righteous. They were self-righteous. In other words, they trusted in themselves that they were righteous as Jesus said at one point, and they despised others. Well, Jesus here talks about how heaven rejoices in these two parables over one sinner that repents. See, Jesus came for the purpose of seeking and saving that which is lost, Luke 19 and verse 10. That was His purpose, to save the lost. But the Pharisees and the scribes did not think they were lost. They thought they were good enough to be pleasing to God and they really thought that they could be saved based upon their good works and they really they didn't need a Savior. They didn't need someone to die for them. On top of that, they completely misunderstood the work of the, Messiah, the Savior, the Messiah, what He would do. And so Jesus gives these parables here to explain the condition of being lost and the rejoicing that is found in being found. And so we saw in the prodigal son the choice that the lost individual had, choosing to depart from the father, choosing to live in the far country, choosing to engage in sinful activity, then realizing his situation and choosing to go back to the father in repentance and confession. In these other parables that came before it, the parable of the sheep and the parable of the coin, we're going to see the value of the one being lost and the effort being put forth to rescue the lost. In the particle son, you you see the uh, choice that's being made by the one who chooses to be lost. But these other two before it emphasize the value. He's speaking this parable to them because if you're ever going to be saved, you got to realize you're lost. If you don't realize you're lost, you're not ever going to turn to a Savior. And that was a problem with the Pharisees and the scribes. They, they didn't know they were lost. And he was making this very clear to them. Beginning in verse 3, he spoke this parable to them. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which, has, which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. 
The people that he spoke to were very familiar with the concept of a shepherd and sheep. The sheep are very valuable to the shepherd. It's his livelihood. And if one of those sheep go astray, he is going to go out and find it. There's that diligent effort to find the lost. Ring out the message. Going after those who have gone astray. And so we see, he says, which of you having these nine, these 100 sheep and you... You lose one would not leave the 99 to go after the one that is lost. It is valuable to the shepherd. And therefore, he is going to seek it. And when he finds it, what does he do? Verse 5, there is rejoicing. Then in verse 6, it says he comes home. He calls together his friends and neighbors and said, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. The rejoicing that takes place when a person comes back to the shepherd. Verse 7, he makes it very clear. There's more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Now that's irony. Because all people need repentance. But the scribes and the Pharisees didn't think they did. They didn't think they did. And he said, look, a sinner repenting, a sinner responding to the will of God, whether they are a person in the New Testament period becoming a Christian or someone who's an unfaithful Christian repenting and coming back, that makes heaven happy. That causes joy in heaven. The Old Testament talks about God delighting in forgiveness. He's full of mercy, full of compassion, and he wants to forgive. The Pharisees and the scribes have forgotten that. And so he says there's joy in heaven over these sinners that are repenting. That's why Jesus was eating with these sinners. Because he wanted to teach them so that they would repent and come to him and come out of their sinful situation and be forgiven. Because that's the work of the Savior. That's the work of the Messiah, bringing people to God. And so that brings joy in heaven. Beginning in verse 8, he's going to tell another parable. He says, Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The common conclusion there. There is joy in heaven over a sinner who repents. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What did we see this morning in the prodigal son? There is rejoicing, there is feasting over the son that has come home. He was dead, but now he's alive again. He was lost, but now he's found. There's rejoicing. The ten silver coins is a very interesting thing. When you study the culture of the first century, the the coins, a denarius, most likely one day's wage, was very important to the women. They would put it in their headdresses. It would be part of their uh, decoration. And if they lost one of them, that would be something that, that would cause them uh, much grief. It would be like a woman today losing her engagement ring or, or losing her wedding ring. They're going to do what they can to find it. And when this uh, woman who loses a, a silver co- coin, you know, we don't think of it in those terms because uh, you lose a coins or something in our society. It's, it's not a big deal. But if it was a part of her headdress... That was something she was willing to search the house for. She would light a lamp. You know, houses back then weren't very well lit. They didn't have electricity. Usually the common house would have only one window in it. And so she would light a lamp, sweep the house. She would go through and try to find it. Most houses back then had dirt floors. It could easily be fallen on the floor and covered with dust and thus not found. So she would sweep the house trying to find that coin searching diligently. There's that diligent search as the shepherd diligently would search out the lost sheep. This woman is diligently uh, 
searching out this coin. Why? It's valuable to her. The sheep was valuable to the shepherd. This coin is valuable to this woman. And therefore, she is seeking this this coin. And when she finds it, what happens? Verse 9. She calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. So we see here this value that's being placed upon the lost. That value that's being placed upon whether it's the sheep or whether it's the coin or whether, as he goes into the prodigal son, the son that is lost. And so you see the value of the one lost. And in these two parables, you see the diligent search for that which is lost. In the prodigal son, there was the choice that's being emphasized. The choice of the one who chose to be lost and chose to come back. And so we see here that these Pharisees and their scribes were missing the point. The reason why Jesus would receive sinners and eat with them is because He was teaching them. He wanted them to come to repentance. Some of the first words out of His mouth when He began to preach in His earthly ministry was, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They had to come out of their sinful condition. But His purpose was to find the lost. In Luke 19, verse 9 and 10, Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house. Zacchaeus was an individual who talked about what he did in service to God in verse 8. He wanted to diligently see Jesus. He was a short man, short of stature. He climbed up in a sycamore tree to see Jesus. And Jesus saw that diligence in Zacchaeus and said, I'm coming to your house. And Zacchaeus began to talk about what he had done. But notice the wording in verse 9, Luke 19 and verse 9. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You see what he's saying here? He's saying, Today salvation has come. Why? Jesus was in his house. That man could not be saved simply by obeying the law of Moses. And he was talking about being an obedient follower of the commands of God. Doing God's commands in verse 8. But Jesus said, today salvation has come to your house. Because he is also a son of Abraham. Therefore those promises made to Abraham in your seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed were being fulfilled in Jesus of Nazareth. Today salvation has come to your house. Why? Because the Son of Man, that's Jesus, has come to seek and save that which is lost. What's he saying to Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus, you need a Savior. What's Jesus saying in in Luke chapter 15? As we, we studied the parable of the prodigal son this morning and these parables tonight, the lost sheep, the lost coin. He's saying to the sinners, you need a Savior. You need the grace and the mercy of God. Without it, there is no way that you can be saved. You're in a lost condition. We must realize, we must understand that if we are Christians today, if we're saved, it's because we were at one time lost. And there's no way we could save ourselves. Think of three men. These three men are on a beach outside of uh, or in the state of New York. One of them is an outstanding businessman, outstanding moral individual. The other one is a very foul-mouthed drunkard. And the other one is just a good neighbor. They say, watch this. One of them says, watch this. I'm going to jump across the ocean to get to England. I'm going to jump across the ocean to get to England. And this drunkard, he hauls off and he runs as fast as he can. He jumps as far as he can and falls in the water. He couldn't make it. The good neighbor says, well, I I probably could do it. 
So he, he takes off and runs as fast as he can. He jumps off. Of course, he falls in the water. The morally, morally outstanding individual says, I can do it. He hauls off and runs and jumps. He might even jump even further than the other two. He falls in the water. Why? There's no way they can bridge that gap between New York and England. No way in their own power they could do that. However, by grace and mercy, if there is a ship that's there provided for them to, by faith, get on and remain on, then they can get to England. That's how it is with salvation. These Pharisees and these scribes, they thought they could earn it. They thought they deserved it. Zacchaeus may have, to a certain extent, had that attitude. Perhaps not as pompous and as arrogant as the scribes and Pharisees. But without Jesus, without that ship, you're not going to get to England. There's no way. It doesn't matter how bad you are. It doesn't matter how good you are. You cannot, out of your own effort, jump and cross the ocean in your own power to get to your destination. In the same way, we need to obey the Lord. When we do that, we go from the lost condition to the saved condition, from the dead condition to the alive condition in Christ Jesus. Believe in Him with all of your heart. Confess He's the Son of God. Repent of your sins and be immersed in water, baptized into Christ. And when you do that, the grace and the mercy and the compassion of God will be yours. You'll have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Ephesians 1 and verse 3, you'll be added to the church and you can live for Him for the rest of your days. If you've done that, you've gone astray, you've gone back into that dead condition because you've rejected the grace of God through your disobedience, we urge you to repent and come back to Him. As always, the choice is yours while we stand and while we sing.